in material you have two types of materials one which is used in the production process which is visible in the product like plywood in a table whereas indirect material are like tools consumables etc which are you know consumed in the production process like a glue used in fixing the table top that is called indirect material likewise labor labor also has two components direct labor carpenters carpenters who cut the plywood into pieces carpenters who fix the table top table legs etc to whom what you pay is called direct labor the wages direct wages whereas in the workshop we have security people we have a supervisor etc to whom what you pay is called indirect labor and in the workshop you have expenses like electricity water rent insurance repairs maintenance depreciation etc which we call it as manufacturing over it or factory over it so here whatever i am highlighting you should call them as overhead indirect material is over it indirect labor is over it in their factory expenses are over it so indirect material indirect labor factory expenses will come here okay here when you say manufacturing over it indirect material indirect labor and factory expenses okay once you classify the material into direct and indirect indirect portion you should send it to manufacturing over it once you classify the labor into direct and indirect the indirect labor should be sent to the manufacturing over it so in the manufacturing over it you have three cost components what are they factory expenses indirect material and indirect labor do not add this material in the material cost okay now based on this information we are going to prepare a cost sheet cost sheet gives the history of the total cost at different stages a cost sheet should begin with direct material direct material direct material okay direct labor in some uh, uh, textbooks you can find direct expenses as well here but Uh, in our calculations the direct expenses were part of direct material so don't expect direct expenses here assume that these direct expenses are already taken care in material so direct material plus direct labor gives us prime cost prime cost equals to dm plus dl then comes manufacturing overhead manufacturing over it is the total of so here add manufacturing overhead manufacturing over it is the total of uh, indirect material indirect material indirect labor indirect labor and uh factory expenses these three components let us add here to get cost of production cost of production a cost of production is also called as works cost let me write here works cost or factory cost all are same so be familiar with the terminology here prime cost is the total of direct material and direct labor and when we add manufacturing overheads to prime cost you get co- you get cost of production or works cost or factory cost then sometimes you may have a, a semi finished goods at the end of the day which need to be adjusted the same way we may have semi good finished goods of a day before which are produced early in the morning today so you need to adjust here 
beginning work in progress beginning work in progress add here and detect ending work in progress when you detect ending work in progress you will get cost of goods manufactured manufactured okay right so cogm equals to cost of production plus beginning work in progress minus ending work in progress then we need to adjust finished goods value finished goods which are not sold and beginning finished goods finished goods value less ending finished goods we get cost of goods sold cost of goods sold equals to cost of goods manufactured plus beginning finished goods minus ending finished goods this is the cost of goods sold we usually deduct from our sales to get gross profit okay then you will have some non manufacturing overheads non manufacturing overheads which include admin selling and distribution expenses so these non manufacturing overheads need to be added to get a profit okay costing profit and here when you add a non manufacturing overheads you will get total cost total cost equals to cost of goods sold plus non manufacturing overheads which include admin selling and distribution overheads okay this total cost is to be compared with the sales what we made you know sales the sales minus total cost will give you profit sales minus total cost will give you profit profit is the difference between sales and total cost okay here yeah. always this minus this will give you profit this is called cost sheet and used in rest of our units begin with cost sheet begins with direct material ends with sales and we use the word direct direct means a cost which can be attributable to a product a cost which can be charged to a product a cost which can be you know visible in a product like a picture tube like a picture tube uh, cost in a television like an engine cost in a car like a cloth in a shirt direct labor like a tailor's wages in a ready made garment showroom in a sense what we uh, prepare we prepare ready made uh, garments so the wages paid to the tailors is direct labor direct material plus direct labor will give us prime cost then add your manufacturing overheads manufacturing overheads the word overhead means indirect expenses overhead means indirect expense indirect expense clear right we have overheads in three places that is in a factory factory we call it as factory overhead or manufacturing overhead in admin office okay we call it as administration overhead in admin office we call it as administration overhead in sales and distribution we call it as selling and distribution overhead so we have three different types of overheads manufacturing overhead admin selling and distribution yeah these two are non relate uh, not related to manufacturing whereas these are related to manufacturing so in the factory overheads you will have manufacturing overheads you will have factory expenses indirect material and indirect labor whereas 
In non-manufacturing overheads, you will have admin, selling and distribution overheads. Okay. So this is the amount to this is the amount to manufacture the total cost and this is the amount which you spend to run the business okay admin selling and distribution now a question comes here that how you find you find this direct material okay so direct material consumed the second calculation include direct material consumed material consumed equals to beginning raw materials beginning raw materials plus purchased add purchase of raw materials I'll write RM raw materials add transportation in if you have any transportation charges which are paid by us the transportation in should also be added remember transportation in is a part of direct material consumed transportation out is a part of distribution charges transportation is in is a manufacturing cost transportation out is a non manufacturing cost okay then less purchase returns purchase allowances or discounts purchase discounts less ending raw materials which is not used these amounts are to be deducted deduct this amount will get raw material consumed which is what we used direct material consumed and this is the amount I took there this is the amount we took here this is the amount I'll put a star here means you have a separate calculation for this direct material consumed is to be arrived at using this calculation now uh, what we learned so far was let us have some you know uh, uh, some calculations which will help us to find out you know the, the answer some MCQs direct material plus direct labor what it gives us direct material direct labor equals to prime cost okay direct material plus direct labor direct labor plus manufacturing over it gives us COP cost of production see direct labor is a part of prime cost as well as direct labor is a part of cost of production direct material is a part of prime cost as well as a part of cost of production now direct labor plus manufacturing over it equals to conversion cost direct material direct labor prime cost direct material direct labor manufacturing over it cost of production direct labor plus manufacturing over it where direct material is missing we call it as conversion cost cc why cc is used here sometimes customer may supply the material say i give cloth to tailor shop to to stitch a suit for suit for me so the tailor will not charge me for material he will charge me for direct labor and his overheads plus his profit so that is called conversion cost pricing where no material cost will be charged so please understand these terms well direct material plus direct labor gives us prime cost dm plus dl plus moh will give you cost of production or manufacturing cost or factory cost whereas dl plus MOH gives us conversion cost so DL is a prime cost as well as a conversion cost but DM is not there DM is not a part of conversion cost DL is a part of prime cost as well as conversion cost but not DM 
dm is not there in the conversion cost clear direct material direct material direct labor we call it as prime cost right prime cost then manufacturing over its we call it as cost of production cost of production now i am not considering any work in progress and finished goods adjustments here please pay attention direct material plus direct labor prime cost plus manufacturing over it cost of production i am not adjusting any amount towards my adjustment of work in progress and finished goods let us not think about that so you have a manufacturing over it here manufacturing over it now i will have non manufacturing over it which is not related to cost of production nmoh which include admin admin selling expenses and distribution expenses distribution okay these three amounts are not related to production therefore we call them as non manufacturing expenses listen carefully these three amounts are called as product costs they are called as product costs product cost include product cost include dm dl and moh because these are these are you know used these are spent to produce the goods whereas these two three costs these three costs are called as period costs because they are only incurred to run the business but not to produce the goods period costs period costs include admin a s d overheads okay so product cost include dm dl and moh period cost include admin selling and distribution overheads product costs are also called as inventoryable costs product costs are also called as are also called as inventoryable costs why we call them as inventoryable costs let me give you an example okay so far what we know is what is product cost what is period cost say for example i spent $10000 to produce say 5000 units 5000 units i produced 5000 units and i spent $10000 on account of material $3000 on account of labor so my pro, my prime cost is $13000 clear and i spent a manufacturing overhead which include uh, indirect material indirect labor and factory expenses of say 10000 7000 what is my cost of production 20000 say so 13000 plus 7000 20000 i spent 2500 on admin 1500 on selling expenses and 2000 dollars on say distribution expenses 2500 plus 1500 plus 2000 total 6000 dollars now my total cost of goods manufactured cost of this is cost of production and this is total cost right total cost equals to 26000 as i told you i am not adjusting any amount towards work in progress and finished goods now the question comes right out of 5000 units how many units are sold as of 31st december how many units are there in the closing stock the units which are sold whose cost will go to income statement as cost of goods sold the 
value of the units the value of units which is sold you know will go to income statement as cost of goods sold whereas the value of goods unsold should go to balance sheet under current asset it is to be shown as inventory i produced here 5000 units 5000 units out of 5000 units say for example 5000 units produced we sold 4000 units therefore the closing stock closing stock will be closing inventory will be 1000 units now what is the value of 4000 units sold and what is the value of 1000 units unsold this is the question okay this is the reason why we classify the cost into product cost and period costs so you will find answers for these questions when you know what is product cost and what is period cost now from this information we will let classify the product and period cost and answer these two questions okay the question is what is the value of 4000 units of this 5000 units sold and what is the value of 1000 units which is no not sold let us answer these questions by first of all classifying classifying the costs into product costs and period costs product cost dm yes the 10000 dl yes 3000 manufacturing over it yes of course 7000 so i spent a product cost of you know 20000 period cost admin okay i'll copy here admin selling and distribution over its total of six thousand dollars the main uh, you know uh, uh, important point of product cost and period cost is that product cost says that you go and check whether the goods are sold or not product cost says that you go and check whether the goods are sold or not goods are sold but only 4000 units okay so here cost of goods sold cost of goods sold goods sold equals to $20,000 times how many units are sold 4000 divided by how many units are produced 5000 so the cost of goods sold equals to it is a uh, sixteen thousand dollars this amount is charged to income statement sixteen thousand dollars is charged to income statement ending inventory ending inventory that is four thousand or five thousand minus four four thousand one thousand units right equals to twenty thousand dollars times one thousand units divided by five thousand units that is how many what is the amount four thousand dollars four thousand dollars here sixteen thousand dollars see the total product cost hmm? yeah total product cost product cost will ask you a question that whether the goods are sold or not sold becomes cost of goods sold will go to income statement unsold will become ending inventory goes to balance sheet so this is charged to income statement okay and this is charged to balance sheet balance sheet and the current assets current assets okay so 
the product cost or inventoryable cost both are same will ask you question that whether the goods produced are sold or not sold the cost will become cost of goods sold unsold the cost will become ending inventory what about the period cost period cost will become an expense in the period which is incurred whether you produce or whether you sell or not the entire amount will go to income statement period cost the amount of period cost cost whether the goods are sold or not whether the goods are sold or not charge to income statement i am mentioning here full amount so no, there is no question that what amount is to be charged okay expense period costs or expensed as incurred means as in when you incur you expense full amount will go to income statement there is no question that how many units you produced how many units you sold this is a specialty of the period cost it doesn't depend on the amount of units produced the amount of units sold simply it should be transferred to income statement period costs are expensed as incurred okay now let us learn the classification of costs classification of costs we we know how the costs are treated in our cost sheet we learnt a full length cost sheet and we know where to place the costs and when the costs are placed what term we get here we learn this but some of the expenses you know are not even going to the balance sheet even though a single unit is not produced or sold like example period cost say you produced 5000 units but nothing is sold still 6000 will go to income statement all entire 20000 will go to balance sheet clear so let us classify the costs classify the costs according to their behavior according to their control according to their treatment etc so classification of cost according to their behavior according to cost behavior fixed costs variable costs and mixed costs so according to cost behavior costs are classified into fixed cost variable cost and mixed cost what are fixed costs fixed costs remain constant remain constant within a relevant range within a relevant range relevant range means say for example from january to december this is called a relevant range we enter into a contract with a landlord for factory building rent is say 120000 120000 rent is same from january to december each month 10000 he will not increase or decrease based on your production okay this is called relevant range relevant range can be a time period or a production capacity production capacity production capacity means you say for example your factory building using the building you can produce a maximum of 10000 units 
up to 10,000 units, you produce 1,000 units or 2,000 units or 9,000 units or 10,000 units, your fixed cost remains same. The rent cost remains same. So, a time period or a production capacity, the fixed cost will remain same. Okay. Now, examples include insurance, rent, license fee, okay, depreciation, manager's salary, etc., etc. They do not increase or decrease due to you know the production capacity or, or uh, production is more or less the cost will remain same but here what we should see is that fixed cost is same each month but are you producing the goods as we designed as we have the capacity or not so for this we can say fixed costs as amount as amount remain constant but per unit variable let me show you example january february rent you are paying a monthly rent of say ten thousand dollars okay here also ten thousand dollars irrespective of the production capacity whether you produce less or more the rental cost is ten thousand dollars but here the number of units produced are sold number of units produced produced say for example here 5000 units here only 4000 units your landlord will not decrease the rent just because you produce only 4000 units rent is fixed from january to december each month 10000 now when you see from amount point of view it is fixed okay so here you can say as an amount it is fixed as an amount fixed so this amount as an amount it is fixed Okay, as an amount it is fixed but what about per unit per unit per unit cost equals to ten thousand dollars divided by five thousand units so it is going to be how much ten thousand dollars dollars here same thing ten thousand dollars divided by four thousand units so it is going to be hmm, two point five dollars see fixed cost when you see as an amount it's constant but per unit is variable when you produce less units the cost will go up so try to produce try to utilize your capacity production capacity well otherwise your cost will go up if you produce 6000 units here it should have been less than 2 if you use your production capacity well say for example you have a production capacity of 10000 units yes when you produce 10000 units ten thousand dollars divided by ten thousand units your fixed cost per unit will be only one dollar wherein every additional unit you sell from that point that month you will get additional profit of one dollar per unit extra you sold so when you produce above five thousand units always this two dollars will go decrease the difference between this cost and the when you produce additional more than five thousand units that would be your profit See, you are not increasing the selling price. You are not controlling the cost. 
but just you are making use of your resources well you are making use of your relevant range well so this is the reason why a fixed cost will give you an advantage if the relevant range is properly utilized okay so what we can write here that fixed cost as an amount constant but per unit per unit is variable per unit is variable okay fixed cost is an amount constant but per unit is variable when you draw a fixed cost line when you draw a fixed cost line it will be like constant you know it will be like this your fixed cost line will be like this your rent amount each month will remain same this is your fixed cost line okay your fixed cost in january it is same february it is same march it is same like that but fixed cost per unit it will go down it's it begins here and slowly it falls down fixed cost per unit okay i cannot draw that fixed cost i think okay like this i have to insert table here like this shall we try yeah okay what is variable cost variable cost is the cost which varies according to the production oops variable cost is the cost which varies or which fluctuates according to the production okay so varies according to the production means it fluctuates okay it fluctuates if the production is more cost will be more the production is less cost will be less okay example include direct material direct labor okay power power hmm? uh, utilities like electricity water etc etc commissions and all so variable expenses will go up if the production capacity goes up sales go up variable expenses will go down if the production capacity goes down so here we can say that it is you know variable as an amount variable expenses variable expenses or variable or you know fluctuate okay as an amount as an amount but per unit is constant how say for example we have a raw material of we have a raw material of say 5 dollars per unit raw material cost material cost 5 dollars per unit Five dollars per unit. How many units we produced here? We produced in January five four five thousand units. In January five thousand. In February four thousand. Now what is the raw material cost here? Raw material cost will be amount of variable cost. Amount of variable cost equals to yes twenty five thousand dollars. Amount of variable cost in the month of February is equivalent to how much? Twenty thousand dollars. Okay, twenty thousand dollars. Now, 
if you calculate again per unit variable cost per unit per unit equals to $25,000 divided by 5,000 units. $5 and $20,000 divided by 4,000 units, four, $5. So what do we know here as an amount? Amount variable, but as, an, um, as a per unit, per unit constant 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 yeah okay this is what we learned from uh, the behavior of the cost fixed cost as an amount is fixed but per unit is variable variable cost as an amount is variable but per unit is constant okay the next cost is mixed cost. If you want to depict uh, the variable cost, it will be always like this. You know, it goes up. It goes up. Variable cost goes up when the production capacity goes up. Okay. So, uh, if the variable uh, production cost go uh, production capacity goes down, the variable cost will also go down. Then mixed cost. Mixed costs. Mixed costs are also called as semi-fixed or semi-variable, semi-variable costs, okay? Example, say for example, we have a sales manager, sales manager, salary, a monthly salary, of $2,000 and $3 per unit sold. Okay, so it has a combination of both fixed and variable. Irrespective of the number of units sold, you will be paid $2,000 which is fixed. And the variable portion will begin. Say for example, in the month of February, Sales manager unit sold unit sold equals to say for example 320. So sales manager salary equals to fixed cost plus variable cost. So it has a flavor of both fixed cost plus variable cost. How do you find out variable cost? The units times the price. So fixed cost that is $2,000 plus variable cost. While calculating the variable cost what you need to do is $3 times number of units sold that is 320. So this portion is variable portion and this portion is fixed portion and this total portion is mixed portion. When a cost consists of both fixed, variable, and mixed, or uh, fixed and variable, it is called mixed. High low method using this fixed and variable cost system, we can find out from a given activity level, we can find out fixed cost and variable costs. High low method. High low method is used to find fixed and variable costs from a given different activity levels. Okay, what are the steps to be used here to find out fixed and variable costs? Step number one, locate or find the highest activity level and its total cost total cost. Step two, find, locate lowest activity level and its total cost. Okay. Three, find the variable cost. Use the formula. Okay. Variable cost equals to, equals to a uh, difference between difference in quantity cost difference in total cost between 
highest activity level and lowest activity level divided by difference in cost difference in quantity difference in total quantity between highest activity level and lowest activity level this will give you a variable cost per unit okay variable cost per unit you can find out using this formula lowest activity level highest activity level then find the fixed cost the fourth step is find the fixed cost how do you find the fixed cost we know that total cost equals to fixed cost plus variable cost per unit into number of units like the previous example I gave you here fixed cost plus variable cost per unit times you know number of units now here also from this equation we have to find out the fixed cost fixed cost is here for your information so it has to come here and total cost will go there so fixed cost equals to okay total cost minus variable cost per unit into number of units so using this uh, information you need to find out fixed cost once you find out fixed cost and variable cost per unit at any activity level within the relevant range you can estimate the total cost in fact the importance of high low method is not only to find out just variable cost and fixed cost but we can also estimate the cost at a given activity level within a relevant range now let us take an example and find out fixed cost and variable cost. 